Once upon a time, not long from now, I was there when the world ended. I wake up in a daze. How long have I been lying here? Hey, what's up? Joe Blow here with a review for Chronology. This time-traveling indie platformer almost got the boot before the clock even started. But thanks to a handful of developers, this little guy kept on ticking. Will this game stand the test of time, or clock out in its prime? And another time expression. That's where the ticking is coming from! You wake up as an old inventor blasted to the future. It's a post-apocalyptic world, and you have no memory of the past. You kind of talk to yourself a bit and then find a clock that mysteriously allows you to travel back and forth from the world before to the world now. I invented this. As you go back and forth from the past to future, or present I guess, I'll just call it future present from now on, you start remembering little bits of information about who you are and what you did. Apparently you were partly responsible for the world going to hell. In between each chapter, and there are 8 chapters total, there's a cutscene that's pretty much just a layered image with a camera push and VO. These scenes in between the chapters kind of fill you in on what happened and what's going on, but just barely. Along the way you find a talking snail who has the ability to completely freeze time. Upon meeting this little guy, you immediately want to throw him off a cliff. He's pretty annoying. I thought maybe I was being harsh, but then... How did you get so clever? How did you get so annoying? Eventually you get used to the snail, but you never really warm up to him. He's incredibly useful in the gameplay aspect though, so he's definitely necessary. Also, I won't spoil the ending, but let me just say you'll be disappointed. Granted, I wasn't really expecting something incredible or deep, but it definitely falls flat and then just ends. Needless to say, you probably won't play this for the enriching story or to find out how it all ends. The gameplay is what makes this game unique and interesting. As mentioned before, you have the ability to travel back and forth from the past to the future present. You just press one button and it switches the entire world back and forth. It's super easy to do, and you can do it however many times you want. You can even do a little DJ remix. The time travel mechanic is used in order to solve various puzzles throughout the game. You can affect things in the past so the future landscape alters in order to achieve your goal. For instance, you can plant a tree at a different location in the past, and the tree will be grown in the spot you need in the future. Talk about instant gratification. You can also carry items from the past to the future present. This carries multiple ways to approach a puzzle. Near the beginning of the game, you meet the snail. Why the long face, snail? Snail is able to completely freeze time as often as you like. You switch back and forth between the two depending on your time-altering needs, and there is no limit to when and where you affect the time. Freezing time proves useful with moving objects. You'll come across platforms where elements whiz across the screen, and you have to freeze time at just the right point so you can make your way over to the other side. You do have to put up with Snail's annoying personality and voice, but it's a small price to pay to, you know, freeze time. Shut up, Snail! I did often forget about my time traveling ability, oddly enough. I'd spend more time than I'd like to admit trying to figure out a puzzle, and after about 5 or 10 minutes go, Oh, right, I can travel through time, you idiot. But I'm pretty sure that was just me not getting enough sleep. The controls are pretty solid for the most part, but the character doesn't move as smoothly as I'd like. It feels very rigid at times, especially when jumping. I died quite a few times just because the jump isn't very strong or accurate. There are also, unfortunately, no fun little extras for you to pick up along the way, so you're literally just running through puzzles the whole time. No hidden secrets or subplots, just a straight playthrough for about an hour. It's definitely fun and mildly challenging, but lacks any replayability in that regard. Let's get to the bottom of this. No, you can't pause the cutscenes, or skip them. However, you're not going to get much from the story, and the chapters start with you just standing there waiting to go, so if someone needs your attention, you can just put the controller down and miss the entire cutscene without missing out on much. Yes, it's an old guy in a snail time traveling. No crazy violence or foul language. It's all hokey and fun. Even the scary things aren't really that scary. You'll beat it in about an hour and probably won't have a desire to go back and play it again. I believe you can only buy this game, but it's definitely a fun little game to pass the time. Worth the money in my eyes. I have to finish this alone. With lush backgrounds and powerful mechanics, this game had some major promise. It fell a little short, but since we're lucky it even got finished in the first place, I think it's safe to just count it as a win. 
It's a quick play, but still fun and worth your time.